Also, there's a, there's a couple differences. Um, the biggest one is that for a film or for television, uh, you only need a little slice of the interface, uh, a little piece of it. Um, and in real life, you need, a well, uh, you need a deep interface that's well worked out. You need help systems. You need things to work um, in a lot of different cases. In, in film and video, the interface is almost another character. And so you can treat it almost as a character. Uh, but, but the ideas are just this thin. They're very surface. So they don't take as much time, and in fact, usually the budget for interfaces is very small. Um, and so the interfaces are, are, are done, they're created incredibly quickly and inexpensively because there's not much of a budget. But you could never create a real interface like that. So the, another piece of the difference is that uh, because it's almost a character in the interface, you, and in science fiction in general, you have to wow the audience. You have to show them something new and something special. And that's where the inspiration can come in. The nice thing about science fiction is you don't have the same kind of constraints uh, you do in the real world. Um, and, and things are supposed to be new and different. So that gives science fiction production designers and directors and writers a license that's much more open than we as interface designers, interaction designers in the real world usually get to, to uh, get to play, play with. So we see things that, were, that are created in science fiction that can inspire us to think in new ways and do new things, but we still have to bring it down to um, experiences that, are, that work for people. That, that actually have to work in the real world. But we don't often have the opportunity to think so, so far and uh, so wide in terms of ideas. In, fact, uh, in, in my school in San Francisco, we have an a executive program called the Fellows Program, and one of our fellows last year, her whole project was called Science Fiction Thinking. So you may have heard of design thinking, it's very big these days. She wants to create um, a, a term and an approach called science fiction thinking to use in schools uh, to teach math and science, but with the kind of inspiration about creating the future and creating new things. Um, we don't, we just, it's, we simply don't take the time to do so because we have schedules, we have budgets, we have deliverables that we have to get done. Um, and and we don't give ourselves the opportunity to be inspired by things or to think widely um, like we, we could or we should. Designers today need to pull inspiration from all different kinds of places, from the past, from the future. Um, we live in a, in, in a pretty amazing time. We have these devices that uh, we touch and draw on, that speak to us, that we speak back to. We sort of are living in the future now. Um, I think there's good and bad for that. It's, it's good because we have uh, interface possibilities that we've never had before, but it's also bad because our present is so futuristic that we don't take time to think about the actual future, what's coming. We're, we're pretty focused on the now. I think that designers today need to look everywhere for inspiration, and science fiction is one of the places that they can look. And I think that uh, designers need to take uh, the opportunity once in a while to, to give themselves a project that isn't rooted in today, give themselves a project for 10 or 20 or 30 years or 300 years out, just to let their minds expand, then they can bring ideas back to three years from now um, and figure out what could be actually built, whether it should actually be built. But if all we do is look at today, um, we, don't, we don't feed our curiosity, we don't feed our inspiration.